Good afternoon everyone and it's a beautiful day, some blue sky but some clouds around and I've spotted an ear on a termite mound. Have a look at that. There's a little leopard hiding on top of a termite mound. <laughs> Isn't that fantastic? My name is Byron and on camera with me this afternoon is Brian and as always the thumb joining us. Now I've lit... Well there she just sat up. Hang on, let's see what she does. Look at that. That is wonderful. But you know what, let me see if I can't get around to the other side of the termite mound. You may have a better view of her face from there. Let's have a look. This is a very pleasant surprise. What a start. James with the lion, and we just managed to find a leopard. Um, so I'm going to go through here, try to work my way back. It's the only little gap that we've got. All right, so while I reposition, um, James and I are not the only ones out here. Jamie is on bushwalk or in the tent this afternoon. Let's go say hi. And now this young female is playing a bit of hide and seek with us at the moment. She's hiding just behind um, the termite mound. She's moved, uh, repositioned, and she was out in the open. And now she's just uh, moved around to the other side. But I think she was just uh, stretching. These young cubs often do get a bit restless. They don't lie still as much as adults can. So wonderful to see her. We were very lucky to find her this morning. And again this afternoon, not far from where we saw her this morning. But she definitely has been moving around. Um, she actually disappeared this morning. We did a loop around one of the dams and in the drainage lines to see if um, the female Karula, her mother, was around. But uh, unfortunately, um, she wasn't. And when we came back, she, um, uh, this female had disappeared. So I think she just went south across our boundary and then came back again, which they do. And it's interesting to see these young, these young cubs um, Shungile and Hosanna becoming a little bit more independent. They're moving around a lot more. They're exploring. They're not staying close together as they used to, as much as they used to. So it's interesting to see how these young cubs are are, um, are starting to grow up ve very quickly. It really is amazing. The next few months are going to be very interesting for us, viewing these cubs, seeing what they what they do and where they move and also if they start to learn how to hunt perhaps with something small like mongoose or squirrels or a guinea fowl or franklin often young cubs learn to hunt with little franklin try and stalk and catch them it's a process and then eventually when they get a bit older they'll be able to to look for for decent prey, Steenbok, Impala, but only from the age of about a year and a half, I would say, on average. And she's got a beautiful little vantage point there at the moment, up on the termite mound. She can glance around and survey the terrain and area around her, and she's also in the shade, which is perfect. As we said earlier, there's a bit of cloud cover, so it's not too hot this afternoon. It's really lovely. And such a nice afternoon. Good to be out again. And uh, just shows you never know what you're going to find. And I'm so glad I broke that little streak that I had, or the, that day rather, where I just couldn't find anything. And I know Jamie said yesterday she felt like she was having a day like that. It just happens at times. You can drive around, search high and low, and find absolutely nothing. And then all of a sudden, the bush rewards you with something like this beautiful leopard up on a termite mound close to us and fairly easy to find. 
um, just uh, having a good look and glancing and making sure we check all these termite mounds. It helps if you understand animal behavior a little bit and knowing that chances are she could be lying up on a termite mound or in a tree. It is fairly warm um, and also leopards do enjoy a vantage point to look around um, but it all depends you know they they could also be right in the thicket hiding or in a drainage line so it was just a bit of luck I think um, finding her or should we say skill Brian uh, skill all the way <laughs> I've been looking around this. I've been looking around this area again, um, and no sign of her sibling Hosanna or the mother uh, Karula. I've been not sure where they are. Um, um, I suspect that Karula left this uh, young female in this area this morning early, sometime, and maybe even last night, and went off to potentially hunt. And um, and I'm not sure where the young male is. We heard we heard uh, um, Franklin alarm calling not too far from this area this morning down in the drainage line, and we searched through there, but we couldn't see anything. So they could potentially be just south of our boundary. We're right up against our southern boundary, the Gary Gary access. So they could be south of the boundary, um, but who knows? Maybe at some point Karula will. Uh, return and collect this cub and take her to a kill, hopefully. And James had an incredible sighting with this young female the other day um, when he was on bushwalk. Very, very, I think, special sighting. It is not something that happens very often at all. Um, I know, I think I've experienced it once before, tracking a young male leopard, also a, a, a very young, fairly young cub, just over a year old, year and a half old, and um, and we were able to sit and view it on foot, but um, but that is, is not something that happens often, and also not something I recommend to anybody to try. These are wild leopards, wild animals, Occasionally, they feel comfortable and they allow you close to them, but usually the leopard behavior is they will try to run away and move away from you unless they feel threatened, and then you could potentially find yourself in some serious trouble. Leopards are very fast, very powerful, and they can cause you serious harm. I'm going to try and reposition the vehicle again and see if I can't get a better view of this young cub on the termite mound. While I do that, let's head back to James and that lioness. Well, Shungile is resting and she hasn't moved. Um, very, very comfortable up on the termite mound. And it's still quite warm, so I think that's why she's just resting and waiting perhaps for her mother to return, Karula, to hopefully have good news about a kill perhaps that she's made. So, um, you know, I've actually repositioned the vehicle now. We're just on the other side of the termite mound from where we were earlier um, because she hasn't moved again. She seems very comfortable up there. And it's interesting, a lot of people think leopards generally lie up in trees and they don't lie up in trees that often. I mean, we have seen them a few times. And if you are fortunate enough to get a leopard in a tree, it is a wonderful sighting. But they do spend a lot more time on the ground, lying in the shade, in thickets, in drainage lines, or up on termite mounds like this. I was saying earlier what a nice vantage point it is for her. She can keep an eye out for any potential threats. And she, every now and then she just lifts her head, looks around, and also she's still constantly very aware of what is moving around her. She will be listening, keeping a, a, an ear out for anything that's moving close by. So even though they appear to be asleep, they are still very, very aware and very alert of what is happening around them. 
We have had such a wonderful view of her this afternoon. I think I might spend a few more minutes with her and then possibly leave her, let her rest, see what else we can potentially find this afternoon. Jessica, you wanted to know, would the termites bite her? Now, Jessica, if that termite mound was active and there were termites moving around, they would most definitely bite her. Um, however, and if you have a look at this termite mound, there's a lot of vegetation growing on, around, and in it. And that is a good sign that the termite mound is no longer active. I don't think this termite mound is active. I think the termites have moved out. And that could be a number of reasons, but one of the main reasons is perhaps the moisture. Uh, the ground moisture under the termite mound has dropped the water level. Termites do rely on water. And if the moisture or perhaps the food in the area um, has decreased, then they most likely would move out of an area. And uh, this termite mound I don't think is active anymore. It appears very old and especially because all these trees that we can see growing on it would have grown after the termite mound was built. So this is a very old termite mound. But the soil is very fertile because of the termites. They use their feces, saliva, a mixture of feces, saliva and the soil to build these mounds. And that soil is then very fertile. So any seeds that are dropped on there by animals or birds, those seeds germinate fairly quickly and, uh, and vegetation grows out there very easily. So this termite mound is not active and therefore this young leopard would not be phased or disturbed by any, um, excuse me, by any uh, termites. James Duncan, you want to know what types of trees are around at the moment. So let's start from left to right. Um, oh dear, the one looks a bit tricky. <laughs> we'll see. Now over here on my left, um, this uh, uh, very thick tree, very sharp thorns on it. This is called a buffalo thorn, uh, which is Zizifus mucronata. And that has very, very sharp thorns on it. There you can see some of them. So that's that tree. And uh, that will start bearing fruit. They do get little fruit that um, fairly soon. Uh, some of them have got fruit on them already. Tiny little, almost berry-like fruit, but they've got seeds in it that the, the buffalo thorn bears. Then the next tree, very close to it, right next door to it, a very tall, big tree. That is called a, an apple leaf, a Phalaenoptera violacea. And that is a wonderful tree too, beautiful tree for shade. And it is also known as the rain tree. Uh, in some cultures, they believe, well, they call it the rain tree because uh, young boys, when they would move out in rural areas, they would go and um, uh, look after cattle in the, in the field, and they would often use these trees for shade and rest under them. But they, you get little spittle bugs, and these spittle bugs secrete liquid. What they do is they drain the moisture out of the leaves and out of the tree. They sit on the branches, and then literally as they are and drinking the sap and the moisture out of the tree, it passes through the body very quickly. And that spittle bug then drops moisture down or little drops of liquid and often people would be sitting under these trees and have these little drops dripping on them so they would call them the rain tree they didn't know what was causing it but those are the spittle bugs and then oh dear what have we got here this looks like a false marula that is what this tree is, a false marula. Uh, uh, false marula, what is the scientific name of this? Now, I have hit a blank. I've not seen one of these for a while. I will think about it. I think it may come to me. Don't want anybody to tell me. I'm going to try to think about it when I...
run out of ideas completely, then I'll ask for some help. But for the moment, let me think. I do think I'll be able to get the, the idea for it. And the false marula, from what I've seen in the past, doesn't really bear fruit. So, um, what is the false marula? Um, oh, I like these quizzes because it makes me think very hard about the scientific names. And it's interesting, and we only use the scientific names because a lot of the trees within Africa have got a number of common names. So somebody might use a for example the buffalo thorn tree they might call it a buffalo thorn they might call it a hock and stick um, they might call call it a blunt blad wachebiki those are all afrikaans terms so there's often conflict with common names but if you say it is a zizifus mucronata there's no other name for it that is its scientific name so and that's how we identify the trees so it's important for us to learn the scientific names even though we don't necessarily use them but if people argue then we can say well this is what it is called end of story there's no other name for it. Uh, um, what is it? Here, yeah, and I'm thinking very carefully on this false marula. I want a, you know what? Is it not Lania Shrine Fertii? Yes, I got it. Lania Shrine Fertii. <laughs> that is exactly what it is. <laughs> uh, I've still got it, Brian. Haven't just <laughs> lost it just yet. Christina, you want to know what are the chances of this cat being bitten by a venomous snake? Now, it's not uh, it's not uncommon. It has happened before, um, but fortunately, these these leopards are very very fast and very agile. And I actually saw footage the other day, which I couldn't believe. I'd, I'd never seen anything like it before. But a female leopard with her cub, not too far from here, they. Um, they came across a black mamba, which we all know is very venomous, very big, very fast. And um, this black snake eagle from the mamba, but uh, these leopards actually attacked this black mamba and managed to chase the mamba off. Now, I, I, to be honest, I just find that incredible because a mamba is so fast and these leopards were pawing at it and jumping away every time the mamba would try, and, uh, try to strike. I have seen leopards a few times feeding on snakes, mainly pythons, big African rock pythons, that they get very large and very fat, so it's actually a good meal. And I've seen leopards feeding on them before, so they are very quick and they are able to kill snakes if they have to. But if, I mean, if a leopard was unlucky and not quick enough, got bitten by a spitting cobra perhaps, or a, or a mamba, that could potentially result in death. So they would have to be very careful, and usually they try and avoid the snake especially those venomous ones but just shows you you never know what you're going to see in nature Tucker, good afternoon to you, and you four years old. It's so nice having our young viewers watching, and you wanted to know if this beautiful female leopard, Shungile, found her, her brother, Hosanna. So, Tucker, no, um, we saw the young male yesterday, um, not too far from here, um, but... They may have met up during the, the course of the evening, Tucker, so maybe last night they did meet up, and I've got a feeling that this young male is not too far. I think he's around somewhere, but, um, but possibly just hiding maybe down in a drainage line in a thick area, waiting for the female to return to hopefully have good news that there's some food for them. But I'm sure at some point they will meet up again fairly soon, maybe tonight or tomorrow morning, we don't know. Maybe even this afternoon. 
I'm going to leave this beautiful young leopard now. We've had a wonderful sighting of her. And I think she deserves a rest. So we're going to leave her and see what else we can find this afternoon. So let's cross over to Jamie and see what she is up to. Shungile, my name is Byron. Good afternoon to all the schools, uh, all the teachers rather. And uh, Brian is on camera with me this afternoon and his very famous thumb. Now we were very fortunate we got to find this young female um, a little bit earlier and she's been very, very... Um, Oh, what's the word? She's been very kind to us. She's been resting and lying not far from us up on the termite mound. Look at her tongue sticking out. Now this is Shungile, the male, uh, the female that James mentioned he saw on foot the other day. And what an incredible experience that was. And Jamie also mentioned... <clears throat> um, now, Samantha, you want to know if any of these animals get allow us to get close enough to touch touch them? Uh, no. So, Samantha, they they don't. But also, we wouldn't try. These are wild animals, and um, we we would not at all try to touch them because we potentially put ourselves in danger as well as the animals. Because if something happens, then you know the action would be taken against the animal probably and you know we could also cause injury to ourselves because of that we are very very respectful of the animal's space and we do not try and touch them or harm them in any way so we are purely here to view observe and interpret the bush and the animals and their behavior to viewers so no we would not try and touch them at all now this beautiful young female leopard shungile has a sibling hosana and they are two leopards that we see fairly regularly because her, their mother, uh, um, Karula, is a well-known leopard. And she is probably the most dominant female leopard on Juma, where, where we are at the moment. So we have been very fortunate and seen her for many years. And we've... And we've seen um, them grow, or we've seen her um, raise a few different cubs. And we've seen these young cubs from a very young age grow up. And now they are just over 10 months old. So it's still very young and still very reliant on the female. Um, they do rely on her for food. So I think at the moment, and what does happen is she will leave the cubs in an area. Um, Karula will go off and hunt during the day or during the evening. And if she does manage to kill something, she will return, fetch the cubs, call for them, fetch them, and then take them to the kill so that they may also feed. But at the moment, they are getting to that age where they're almost a year old, so they're getting a bit more adventurous, and they're exploring. So the cubs don't stay together as much anymore. And what's happening is the young male is moving off a little bit on his own, not too far, still in the area where the mother would have left them. But, um, but they are exploring, and this female did it this morning too. She's been walking around a bit. But again, staying kind of in the area that the female did leave them so that if she does come back and calls for them they will find her again so that they can follow her to a kill for food now usually leopards will become independent anywhere between a year and a year and a half the average age is about a year and a half so 18 months and then what will happen is the female will chase them off and she will hiss and growl and make it very clear that she's no longer going to look after them and she will chase them off and they will have to start fending for themselves now Amy you you wanted to know if these animals prey on each other in a natural environment yes this is completely a natural environment so they do prey on other animals leopards for example will prey on a wide variety of species ranging from birds small mammals all the way up to larger mammals like the impala kudu or inyala which are all antelope that we get in this area so yes that's exactly what they prey on and um, the predators usually try and avoid each other but if anything a lion is obviously the largest and most powerful predator so what they would do is they would um, uh, potentially kill especially young some of these young cubs if they come across them purely because of competition they will not um, they will not uh, tolerate having young leopards in their area but leopards are able to move up up they are able to climb up into a tree and escape those predators which is uh, which is uh, very helpful 
Um, I'm going to leave this young leopard now. We've had a wonderful view of her for most of the afternoon. We're going to let her rest and we are going to see what else we can find. While I do that, let's cross back to James and see what he has got. Good afternoon everyone and it's a beautiful day, some blue sky but some clouds around and I've spotted an ear on a termite mound. Have a look at that. There's a little leopard hiding on top of a termite mound. <laughs> Isn't that fantastic? My name is Byron and on camera with me this afternoon is Brian and as always the thumb joining us. Now I've lit well there she just sat up. Hang on, let's see what she does. Look at that. That is wonderful. But you know what, let me see if I can't get around to the other side of the termite mound. You may have a better view of her face from there. Let's have a look. This is a very pleasant surprise. What a start. James with the lion, and we just managed to find a leopard. Um, I'm going to go through here, try to work my way back. It's the only little gap that we've got. All right, so while I reposition, um, James and I are not the only ones out here. Jamie is on bushwalk or in the tent this afternoon. Let's go say hi. And now this young female is playing a bit of hide and seek with us at the moment. She's hiding just behind um, the termite mound. She's moved, uh, repositioned, and she was out in the open. And now she's just uh, moved around to the other side, but I think she was just uh, stretching. These young cubs often do get a bit restless. They don't lie still as much as adults can. So wonderful to see her. We were very lucky to find her this morning. And again this afternoon, not far from where we saw her this morning, but she definitely has been moving around. Um, she actually disappeared this morning. We did a loop around one of the dams and in the drainage lines to see if um, the female Karula, her mother, was around. But uh, unfortunately, um, she wasn't. And when we came back, she, um, uh, this female had disappeared. So I think she just went south across our boundary and then came back again, which they do. And it's interesting to see these young, these young cubs um, Shungile and Hosanna becoming a little bit more independent. They're moving around a lot more. They're exploring. They're not staying close together as they used to, as much as they used to. So it's interesting to see how these young cubs are are, um, are starting to grow up very, very quickly. It really is amazing. The next few months are going to be very interesting for us, viewing these cubs, seeing what they what they do and where they move. And also, if they start to learn how to hunt, perhaps with something small like mongoose or squirrels or a guinea fowl or Franklin, often young cubs learn to hunt with little Franklin, try and stalk and catch them. It's a process and then eventually when they get a bit older, they'll be able to, to look for for decent prey, Steenbok, Impala, but only from the age of about a year and a half, I would say, on average. And she's got a beautiful little vantage point there at the moment, up on the termite mound. She can glance around and survey the terrain and area around her. And she's also in the shade, which is perfect. As we said earlier, there's a bit of cloud cover, so it's not too hot this afternoon. It's really lovely. And such a nice afternoon. Good to be out again.
and uh, just shows you never know what you're going to find. And I'm so glad I broke that little streak that I had, or the, that day rather, when I just couldn't find anything. And I know Jamie said yesterday she felt like she was having a day like that. It just happens at times you can drive around, search high and low, and find absolutely nothing. And then all of a sudden the bush rewards you with something like this beautiful leopard up on a termite mound close to us and fairly easy to find. Um, just uh, having a good look and glancing and making sure we check all these termite mounds. It helps if you understand animal behavior a little bit and knowing that chances are she could be lying up on a termite mound or in a tree. It is fairly warm um, and also leopards do enjoy a vantage point to look around um, but it all depends you know they they could also be right in the thicket hiding or in a drainage line so it was just a bit of luck I think um, finding her. Or should we say skill, Brian? Uh, skill all the way. I've been looking around this I've been looking around this area again um, and no sign of her sibling Hosanna or the mother uh, Karula I've been not sure where they are um, um, I suspect that Karula left this uh, young female in this area this morning early sometime and maybe even last night and went off to potentially hunt and um, and I'm not sure where the young male is. We heard we heard uh, um, Franklin alarm calling not too far from this area this morning down in the drainage line, and we searched through there, but we couldn't see anything. So they could potentially be just south of our boundary. We're right up against our southern boundary, the Gary Gary access. So they could be south of the boundary, um, but who knows? Maybe at some point Karula will. Uh, return and collect this cub and take her to a kill, hopefully. And James had an incredible sighting with this young female the other day um, when he was on bushwalk. Very, very, I think, special sighting. It is not something that happens very often at all. Um, I know, I think I.